What up guys and girls, it's your boy Pete back here again with another video and today we're going to be talking about the AP Calculus AB and BC exams and how I got 5 on the... We're going to be talking about how I got a 5 with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 on the AP Calculus, AB, and BC exams. So, yeah, it's pretty exciting. Yeah, let's get started. First things first, we're going to talk about the format of the exam. So, we're talking about two exams here, the AP Cal AB and the AP Cal BC exams. So, both of the exams are structured in the exact same way. So, each exam will have two sections, a multiple choice and a free response section. And within those two sections, there are actually two more sections, a calculator and a non-calculator part. So, yeah, just be prepared for that format. Uh, don't be surprised by it. Be familiar with it. And also, I just want to talk about the differences between the two exams. Obviously. Uh, the AP Cal AB exam has a s set of material for it, and then the BC exam actually covers all of that material, but it also adds on a few topics like parametric equations, polar coordinates, vector functions, and series and sequences. So those are like, that's, that's just the only difference between the two exams, those uh, few units, but of course it is a lot more material to BC exam. So just be aware of that. My school actually, the reason I took both of them is because you had to take AB before you took BC at my school, like it was a prereq for it. But a lot of other schools, you can choose between the two. So depending on how you feel, if you're comfortable with the AB material, you can move on to BC already. But it really just depends on your situation. So yeah, just make sure you're familiar with the format and check out, like uh, just depending on your situation, just pick whether to take the AB or the BC exam. So. Let's move on. So the next thing we're going to talk about is calculators. So you can obviously use a calculator on certain portions of the AP Cal exam. So I use the TI-84 plus CE and uh, for both the AB and the BC exams, but any graphing calculator should work as long as it is an approved calculator. and. You can check College Board's website for specific details on what's considered a good calculator, an improved calculator, and what's not considered an improved calculator. So just be aware of that, and also just make sure you're familiar with all your calculator's abilities because you know, calculators, they have they can do a lot of cool stuff, but you can only do the cool stuff if you actually know how to do the cool stuff, so. Wise words right there, but uh, yeah. So like finding zeros, graphing, uh, finding definite integrals, a lot of that stuff can be helpful on the AP Cal, AB and BC exams, but you have to be able to do them kind of fast because you're obviously under a time constraint and just be familiar with them so you don't mess them up and you can do them just faster like I just said before. With that said, don't depend on the calculator, especially on the calculator section because a lot of the questions, most of the work will be done with your brain and your pencil, not really with the calculator. The calculator will just help you at the end of it. So don't depend on it, but be familiar with it to really maximize your chances of doing well. Let's move on to the next section. Another thing I want to talk about is the scoring curves between the AB exam and the BC exam. So mainly I want to talk about the BC curve because the BC curve is really thick curve. Like, I mean, thick. So like, like I think 40% of people who take it get a five on it. So, which means you don't have to do exceptional on the exam to do, to get the five, the max score. Cause like, I remember when I took the BC exam, I literally did not know how to do like two FRQ questions. And like, I like left one of them like almost completely blank. And yeah, it was pretty bad, but like, I still got a five on it. So it's not necessary that you like do amazing. Like a, a lot of the AP exams, it's 70 to 80% equals a five usually on the exam but with bc it's closer to like 50 to 60 percent but i would double check obviously the curves but just be aware of that bc curve because it's a lot more it's the thickest curve in the history of thick curves like it's, it's a freaking thick curve i don't know why i keep saying thick but yeah let's move on so now we're going to talk about a few strategies that you can use to study for the ap calculus a b and bc exams the first thing i want to tell you guys is 
Practice makes perfect. So math, in my opinion, is all about practicing and doing a lot of problems. If you don't practice, you're probably not gonna do well, but if you practice a lot, you can actually do well without actually knowing all the, like having a complete understanding of all the concepts that are being tested on the AP Calculus, AP, and BC exams. So make sure you practice a lot and there's no substitute for practicing. You can't like magically learn how to do problems without actually doing problems. So make sure you just practice and put the time in and the work in to do the practice, because that's my first tip. My second thing is AB Calculus, AB and BC have lots and lots of concepts. So make sure you are learning the concepts. And so for example, like limits, integration, derivatives, they're all like, they have a lot of rules associated, like the hospitals, the hospital rule. That's what I like, feel like I want. Whenever I see that word, I just want to call it the hospital, even though it makes no sense. It might send you to the hospital, but okay, whatever. All those like ideas in calculus have like associated rules, like you have the chain rule, integration by parts, all that good stuff. But the key ideas behind these topics can be explained graphically really well. Like the actual ideas of like limits and stuff can be explained graphically. So I would try and focus on graphing and see how those concepts manifest themselves in graphs. And that'll help really help you understand the concepts behind uh, a lot of things. I want to recommend one YouTube channel. Uh, there's a YouTube channel called Three Blue and One Brown. It's like a really good YouTube channel for math. So the man literally explains stuff so well with graphics and animations. And you really understand a lot more about calculus through those videos. But also he has the most soothing voice in the world. And it might like cure your depression like instantly, like literally like can just like you fall in love with math and fall in love with the guy's voice like it's weird okay but yeah with that said uh, learn the concepts and practice well so those are like the two main I guess components to studying and yeah but there's also a third component that I want to talk about and that's memorization so unfortunately for the AP Calculus AB and BC exams you need to memorize some stuff so like you literally cannot take a derivative or an integral without knowing the rules for taking derivatives and doing integrals. So you actually have to memorize the rules. So that can be used with Quizlet, like flashcards, however you want to do it, or simply practicing and doing a lot of problems. Like you're gonna memorize it eventually. Like if you do enough integration by parts problems, you're gonna memorize the method real quick and it'll be like, whoa, it'll just stick in your brain. But yeah, you really just have to etch them deep into your skull not literally. Or one thing like, if anyone tried to get like a tattoo of like the formulas like on your like wrist or something like, what would they do to you? Like if you like showed up with a tattoo of like the derivative of like freaking like, like the integral of like one over X or something like, what would they do to you? Like, please comment about that below because I would really like to hear some stories. That'd be pretty great. Tattoos of formulas on the AP Calculus, AB and BC exams. What would happen? Don't spend your time studying and thinking about this much, this kind of stuff too much, but if you really want to get desperate, just get a tattoo of all the formulas on your wrist. Actually, don't get a tattoo. I'm not recommending that. I mean, if you want to get a tattoo, you can or not. Like, I mean, why are we talking about tattoos again? Okay, let's move on. So now we're going to talk about prep books, and I did not buy a prep book for this exam. Like, I felt very comfortable with the, like, all the past FRQs that we did in class, and we also did a practice exam in class. And I just felt comfortable with the material. And also, like, the BC curve was really nice, so I wasn't, like, stressing too much about the exam anyway. And honestly, I wouldn't really recommend a prep book. I mean, I guess if you need, like, and if you feel that you need, like, you need more practice or something, you can get a prep book. But, like, there's just so many online resources. You can look up formula sheets. You can look up Khan Academy has all the material already on there. There's previous FRQs and multiple choices online. YouTube videos and just online worksheets. You can, there's so much material online, so I wouldn't like recommend you buy a prep book. But obviously, I'm pretty sure Princeton Review, Barron's, all of them have excellent like review guides. Just make sure you do your research before buying them because you're, you're spending like 15 bucks on them. So just make sure you do your research before you buy it. But I wouldn't really recommend it. And then last but not least, I want to talk about the resources, other like other online resources that you can use. So I would recommend Khan Academy. Obviously, I already mentioned that before. I might recommend it three blue, one brown as a like a conceptual source of studying, I guess. And I can also recommend Organic Chemistry Tutor. Like he basically does everything like science and math related, like in the history of science and math. And I would really highly recommend him. He also, he's very thorough and 
So yeah, those are like my main three online resources for the AP Calculus exams. But yeah, uh, that's pretty much it for today. So if you have any questions, just leave them in the comment section below. If you have, if you just feel like commenting, also comment. I mean, that's pretty cool too. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. If you feel like liking the video, you can like it or dislike. I don't really care. You can subscribe, unsubscribe, do whatever you want to do with your life. Like I mean, yeah, it's pretty great. Have fun studying. Math is fun. I mean, just kidding, it's not fun, but like calculus, you're going to engineering or math, you're going to be using it a lot, so, at least in your first, maybe not in your like actual jobs, but you're going to be using it in college at least, because I mean, yeah, it's engineering, but yeah, whatever, have fun, see you guys next time.